This beluga whale just came face to face with a penguin for the very first time in his life. Just look how happy he is about it. There's nothing quite like laying eyes on something you've never seen before. And guess what? You're about to do just that. Buckle up, internet surfers, because we're about to embark on another episode of things you will see for the first time in your life. At any given moment, your body is performing countless different tasks. In fact, so much is happening at once that it would be impossible to keep up. Here's a little reminder of how much your body is changing without you even realizing. This incredible time lapse, created by Colo Time Lapse on YouTube, has condensed an entire year of fingernail growth into 14 seconds. Now that's impressive. Of course, the fingernail was also trimmed regularly throughout the year, too. Otherwise, we'd probably be looking at a gnarly set of claws right now. You probably haven't thought about it before, but your fingernails actually grow at an average rate of 3.47 millimeters per month, or about a tenth of a millimeter per day. The nails on your dominant hand, that's the one you used to write with, also grows faster than the other, simply because you use them more. This also increases your risk of trauma, like catching a nail or trapping it in something. When this happens, your body naturally sends more blood and nutrients to the area to help repair it, which may speed up growth. That means that while you're watching this video and balancing your phone in your hand, your fingernails are secretly growing. What a freaky thought! Here's a top tip to keep those fingers active. Hit those like and subscribe buttons while you watch. By doing that, and showing the little bell icon some love too, you'll make sure you never miss out on more amazing content. Talk about two birds with one stone. Speaking of birds, there are a few feathered friends in the world, like penguins and ostriches, who are unable to take to the skies. But it seems like peacocks aren't as flightless as they may seem. Am I the only one who feels like my whole life has been a lie after seeing that? This jaw-dropping footage was captured by big cat tracker and wildlife photographer Harsha Narasimhamurthy, and thank goodness it was caught on film. How many people have seen a peacock take off before this? Peacocks are known for their impressive plumage of feathers, which can reach up to 6 feet long and make up around 60% of their body length. But despite their enormous trains and odd proportions, these stunning birds are still able to get airborne, just not for very long. Although they can propel themselves into the air to reach higher ground or get out of the path of a predator, you're unlikely to ever spot a peacock soaring through the air at a long distance. However, they can move pretty fast on their feet, with top running speeds of 16 kilometers an hour. Fancy a race, anyone? Me, me. From blizzards to volcano eruptions, Mother Nature has a whole host of freaky party tricks up her sleeve, but have you ever seen something like this? When oil rig worker Rainy Frederick spotted this bizarre phenomenon off his working platform in Louisiana, he knew he had to catch it on film. But what exactly is going on here? What you're seeing here are called water spouts, and they aren't as adorable as they sound. Simply put, a water spout is a whirling column of air and mist that forms over water. There are two main types, a fair weather water spout and a tornadic water spout. As the name suggests, tornadic water spouts are basically tornadoes that form over water or move from land onto water. They're associated with severe thunderstorms and high wind and have the same characteristics as a tornado. Fair weather water spouts usually form along the dark, flat base of a line of developing cumulus clouds. While tornadic water spouts develop downward in a thunderstorm, a fair weather water spout develops on the surface of the water and works its way upward. Fair weather water spouts don't usually move much, but if one moves on shore, the National Weather Service can issue a tornado warning. Usually, fair weather water spouts dissipate when they make landfall, but they can cause significant damage and injuries to people in a worst case scenario. According to NOAA's National Weather Service, the best way to avoid a water spout is to move at a 90 degree angle to its apparent movement. You never know when that top tip might come in handy. 
Do you guys know of any weird, wonderful, or downright amazing things that people should see for the first time? Get in touch with me at clips at beamazed.com with any incredible footage or images you find online, and you could earn yourself a shout out if I include it in a future episode. Now, let's get back to it. Speaking of freak weather, let's take a look at the land equivalent of our friend the water spout, the not so pleasant sounding dust devil. On the 6th of August 2020, George Reedes from the Yukon Territory in Canada was selling fresh fruit at his stall at Haines Junction when his livelihood was suddenly turned upside down, literally. Within a matter of seconds, the stall's gazebo had been ripped apart and the produce was scattered in the air. Luckily, an onlooker who was buying fruit from the stall with his girlfriend moments before took out his phone and filmed the whole thing. In total, the dust devil lasted around three minutes and completely destroyed Reedy's stall, taking his cash with it. These so-called dust devils form on hot, dry days when one part of the ground, like the dark asphalt of a parking lot, heats up faster than the surrounding ground. This pocket of hot air near the surface rises quickly through the cooler air above it, creating a vertical column of warm rising air. Then, the cool air that has been pushed out of the way circulates vertically, and if a sudden gust comes along, it can blow the arrangement on its side, causing a dust devil. They aren't nearly as big or as destructive as tornadoes, but this clip is enough to prove that they still shouldn't be messed with. Thankfully, Haynes Junction residents helped Reedy's to clean up afterwards and have even raised enough money in donations to cover the loss of the fruit and the cost of repairing his tent and awnings. Faith in humanity restored! Insects may be some of the smallest creatures in the world, but that doesn't mean they aren't capable of some incredible feats way beyond their size. Just check out this tiny inchworm who was making his way across a wooden deck when he suddenly came face to face with a gap, which seemed to him like the gaping chasm that swallowed Gandalf. The determined little worm was spotted in July 2020 by Lucy Pipkins and her friends, and the group decided to film its journey. Oh yeah, you can do it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> it took a few attempts to get the angle just right, but eventually the inchworm was able to use the entire length of its body to bridge the gap before shimmying over to the other side. It just goes to show that big achievements like this one are being made by little creatures all the time, and Pipkins and her friends can be even heard cheering as the worm achieves its goal. There you go. Yes. Go forth and conquer, little buddy. How do you board a huge ship if it doesn't dock? Or worse, if it doesn't stop at all? Well, the answer is simple. You just step right on it without a care in the world. But seriously, don't try this at home. Not that you're likely to find yourself in this scenario anytime soon. This incredible feat of human ingenuity was filmed on the 2nd of April 2018 near the coast of Hailuoto in Finland as the moving Swedish Orient Line ship, the Tavasland, was heading to the port of Olulu. Roll-on, roll-off, or row-row ships like this one were designed to carry wheeled cargo, like cars, trucks, trailers, and railroad cars that are driven on and off the ship on their own wheels, or using a platform vehicle like a self-propelled modular transporter. In this clip, the 190-meter-long row-row container vessel slows and steadies as it approaches the men surrounded by 20 inches of ice, but shows no sign of stopping as the gangplank extends out over the icy waters. But the pilot, a seafarer with extensive knowledge about the port's navigational area, seems totally unfazed and walks out to step onto the ladder without missing a beat. So, this is Finland's answer to Uber, huh? Us humans aren't the only ones who love to have a little boogie from time to time. 
Just take a look at this funky little fella. This is the curious dance of the Sasi, also known as the striped cuckoo, and it's an incredibly rare sight to see. The Sasi can be found in Mexico and Trinidad, and those little hands you see are actually the cuckoo's alula feathers, which are a small projection on the interior edge of the wing of most modern birds. You can basically think of them as bird thumbs, and it just so happens that this species' alula feathers are oddly large and stick out far beyond their wing. What's more, the Sasi has black alula feathers, which means they stand out in contrast against his white breast feathers when he's putting on a show like this. The Sasi pulls out these dazzling moves when approaching a Sasi he hasn't encountered before. Believe it or not, Sasis are a shy species that prefers to hide in the cover of bushes and sing from open perches, meaning it's more often heard than seen. Moves like this should not be contained. We've all heard of so-called seven wonders of the world before, but seven should definitely become eight after you lay your eyes on this place. You'll find this magical spot, known as Studlickle Canyon, in the Glacier Valley in East Iceland. The valley is renowned for its sheep farms, which are considered some of the best in the country. But it's also renowned for the powerful centuries-old glacial river Jokla that has forced its way into the highland through the bottom of the valley. The river was once so fierce that it divided the valley into two parts, cutting farmers and villagers off from each other on either side. To solve the problem, locals built a dam across the river which caused the water level to fall while also changing the appearance of the water itself. Previously, the sand, mud, and glacial sediment dissolved in the river from upstream made it a murky brown color. But now that the river flowing through Studlickle Canyon is fed by the crystal clear spring waters of Halschlan Reservoir, it's taken on a vibrant turquoise hue. This vibrant color is likely caused by algae growth or particles of iron, manganese, calcium carbonate, or other minerals dissolved into the water from the surrounding rock. The canyon also boasts some of the world's most enchanting basalt rock formations, which formed when basaltic lava flows and cools over time, shrinking and cracking into symmetrical columns. Am I the only one who feels like a dip in this river could hold the key to eternal youth? Few things in life are as beautiful and as delicate as a butterfly's wings. And these might just be the most majestic butterflies you've ever laid eyes on. These captivating critters were filmed by insect enthusiast Kazuo Uno near Chiang Mai during a trip to northern Thailand and were shot at 180 frames per second with a Lumix G9 camera. The Lampropterum megis, or green dragon tail butterfly, are a species of swallowtail butterfly that can be found throughout Asia. Because they have a much smaller wing size to body ratio than other species of butterfly, Green dragon tails have a whirring flight as they rapidly beat their wings and dart back and forth almost like dragonflies, which is the reason for their name. Their long tails act like rudders as they steer their flight and land gracefully on the ground, where they rest their wings outspread and stationary. They may look like the most poised and elegant creatures around, but just wait until you see this. It may look like that beautiful butterfly has just rudely taken a pee on a camera, but the truth is less gross. Male dragon tails suck up a lot of water, and once the dissolved minerals have been filtered out, they simply squirt the excess water out of their anus. Now there's a party trick! Take a look at this intriguing image. What do you see? An old tattoo that's been partly painted over? Nope. What you're actually seeing here is an injury caused by a minor kitchen burn that's now peeling to reveal the blue rose tattoo underneath. The tattoo in this photo is owned by Will Jones, and to get a better idea of just how much it's changed over time, here's a photograph taken shortly after it was done by Haltom City-based artist Austin Hansen. It might surprise you to learn that when you get a tattoo, the ink isn't technically placed on your skin, but underneath it. 
Your skin is made up of several layers, the visible upper layer, or the epidermis, the thicker middle layer, called the dermis, and cushiony subcutaneous fat at the bottom. When you get a tattoo, ink flows down the needle into the dermis, creating a wound that the body tries to heal by sending a type of white blood cell called macrophages to the area. These specialized immune cells attempt to digest invaders using acid, but this doesn't work particularly well on ink, so most of it remains embedded inside the dermis. Eventually, however, macrophages can contribute to some fading, alongside other factors, like the UV frequencies in sunlight, which are energetic enough to break down the ink molecules over time. That explains why tattoos that are more frequently exposed, like the ones on the hands or neck, fade quicker than ones covered by clothes. Additionally, as time passes, skin regenerates, and the epidermis layer is replaced by new cells, which contributes to gradual warping and fading over the tattoo. So when the outer epidermis layer is removed in an accident, the dermis, where the ink is found, can be seen more clearly. But whatever you do, don't go burning yourself just to make your tat look fresh again. You've been warned. They say the eyes are the windows to the soul, and sometimes it's fun to imagine swapping eyes with someone for a day just to see what you'd look like with a different color. Well, what if I told you that wasn't such a crazy idea? If you're squeamish, you might want to look away now. Okay, so I should. I did warn you. That's right, this woman can literally pop her eyeball out on demand. You've probably guessed by now that that isn't a real eyeball, it's a prosthetic one. This is YouTuber It's K, who uploaded this informative video on her channel back in 2017 to teach people how to remove and replace a prosthetic eye. When she was younger, K was diagnosed with a very rare condition known as ocular melanoma, which interfered with her vision and meant that she had to have her eye removed. K has learned to live with her prosthetic eye and decided to make this video to help others who might be going through the same ordeal. The process is pretty simple. To remove the eye, just pull down on the lower lid, look up, and gently ease it out from the bottom. And to put it back in, just reverse the method and slide it up and into the socket again. I bet this trick comes in pretty handy when Halloween rolls around. Are you a thrill seeker? Well, China's East Taihong Glass Walk in Hubei might just be the perfect thing for you. The bridge is around 2 meters wide and 266 meters long, and suspended 3,800 feet above the towering mountains of eastern China. As if that wasn't already vertigo-inducing enough, this bridge has another terrifying twist. It cracks when you walk over it. After watching those trembling tourists, you probably think that anyone walking over this bridge surely had a death wish, but here's the catch. It's all just an optical illusion. It seems the operators of this bridge had a truly sadistic streak when they decided to install this cracking technology toward the end of the bridge when it opened back in 2017. The effect is accomplished by using infrared sensors which track the movement of people walking across the bridge. When the sensors are triggered, an audio effect plays, as a grid system of tiny LEDs light up to create the impression that the glass beneath their feet is fracturing into pieces. As you can tell by the reactions of those who cross it, the whole charade seems to catch everyone totally off guard. Fortunately, the bridge has never actually broken, though if it did happen to crack someday, I doubt anyone would believe it. For most people, holding a handful of bugs would be a total nightmare. But what if they were as beautiful as these bad boys? These royal-looking insects are golden scarab beetles, or Crisina resplendens. These ornate beetles from Central America are highly valued by collectors for their brilliant metallic qualities. For a while, the science behind their liquid gold appearance remained a mystery. But in 2017, physicists from the University of Exeter led research into the captivating critters and discovered that the golden appearance isn't due to pigmentation or the presence of any actual metal. 
Instead, the beetles have a one-of-a-kind optical signature, which basically means that the structure of the insect and its armor uniquely manipulates the way light is reflected. Their brilliant golden color and reflective properties sets the beetle apart from hundreds of other brightly colored animals and plants, including other scarab beetle species that are jewel-like green and blue colors. The reason why they are bright gold is a little more unclear. One theory is that it somehow works to camouflage them under certain conditions, or even helps to dazzle potential predators. Either that, or they just love to flex on us. There are more animals on this planet than we can ever imagine. In fact, most animals will never encounter each other in the wild because they live in such vastly different environments without airplanes to take them from point A to B. But what about whales and penguins? Surely they've bumped into each other before? Well, not if you're a beluga whale and a rockhopper penguin, apparently. This adorable first-time encounter took place at the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago, Illinois in March 2020. One Saturday afternoon, Wellington, one of the oldest penguins at Shedd, was allowed to pay a special visit to Kayavak, Mayak, and baby Anik, the youngest beluga, who were super curious about their little rockhopper friend. Believe it or not, belugas are northern hemisphere animals, whereas rockhopper penguins reside in the southern hemisphere. So these two creatures would probably never get a chance to meet in the wild. I don't know about you guys, but I'd watch the heck out of a series of unexpected animal encounters like this one. What would happen if a turtle mated with a giraffe? Something like this, maybe? It may seem like it's just the angle of the tank that's making this little guy seem super elongated, but nope, he really does have a big old freaky neck. This albino soft-shelled turtle is owned by Michael Aquilina, also known as Aquamike on Twitter, and he's quite a character. Soft-shelled turtles are native to the southeastern United States as well as Africa and Asia and can be identified by their flattened, pancake-like bodies and elongated head and necks, complete with a snorkel-like nose. While most turtles have a shell that's composed of bony external plates overlaid with horn, also known as scales or scoots, soft shells have a cartilaginous carapace covered in leathery skin. They're almost entirely aquatic and only emerge from the water to bask or lay eggs. This particular soft shell is even more peculiar because he suffers from albinism, meaning he possesses a recessive gene which has caused a total lack of pigmentation in his skin. Pufferfish are so-called because they have the unique ability to puff themselves up when they feel threatened. But have you ever wondered how they do it? Take a look at this hilarious clip of a pufferfish deflating. You might assume that pufferfish fill up with air and expel it from their mouths to deflate, like when you pinch a balloon between your fingers and let it go, but pufferfish aren't really like balloons at all. That's because they don't fill themselves with air. It's actually all water. Puffers inflate by sucking water into their mouths and then pumping it into their stomach. Their stomach, which has a special lining, is large and folds back on itself like an accordion, allowing it to increase dramatically until the fish is up to three times its normal size. When the puffer feels threatened, the stomach expands and unfolds to fill gaps beneath the head, dorsal, anal fin, and caudal peduncle. The fish balloons and the spines that usually lie flat on the surface stick out, making it an unattractive meal to predators. In fact, parts of the pufferfish are laced with a toxin called tetrodotoxin, which is up to 1,200 times more toxic than cyanide. Which of these things amazed you the most? If your brain is still begging for more, why not catch up on the previous episode from this series next? And don't forget to write in at clips at beamazed.com with any more amazing things you think I should see if you want to earn yourself a shout-out. Thanks for watching, guys.